Okay, so we are on journal 12 here, and we're going to start out with some bell work. This bell work here comes from the homework, chapter 15.2, and we're doing some problems from 1 through 78. So I've picked out uh, 10 to 13, and we've actually done 10 before. Um, before I start this video, I do want to apologize. I am running my laundry right now, so in the background you might hear this um, machine noise, and it's just my laundry machine. Um, so it's just my washing machine going on in the background. So sorry about that, um, but hopefully it doesn't bother you too much. So um, like I said, this one here, number 10, we've actually done before in the previous journal. The only thing, it was written just a little bit differently. So we had found sine 30 is 1 half, cosine 30 is uh, square root of 3 over 2. And to find tangent, that's when we had to take our... Uh, figure out what our y value was, figure out what our x value was, because tangent, let's just put here for a moment, tangent is your y over x. So in this case, remember our unit circle here, our x is our cosine, sine is our y. And so in this case, yesterday we found out that cosine is going to be... Um, the square root of 3 in journal 11. And then cotangent is just a reciprocal of tangent, right? Reciprocal of tangent. So that means that it is going to be uh, just flipping it. And then we found out that we had a square root in the bottom, so we had to rationalize getting the square root of th 3 over 3. And then we found secant by flipping cosine, and then cosecant by flipping sine. So these are the reciprocal to cosine and sine. Okay, now let's try a fresh one here. So we have, um, it wants to know what sine of 45 is. So 45 is on the unit circle. This is, so we use the unit circle to find our x's and y's. And from there we can find all the other trig functions. And so in this case, 45 is square root of two over two also, the angle 45 is my favorite because x's and y's um, in this case are the same in the first quadrant. So um, it's both the square root of 2 over 2 for x and y. So that means that cosine is also the square root of 2 over 2. Then tangent, uh, they've already found, and cotangent, they've already found. So for secant, all we have to do is flip this guy. Well, if I flip... So if I'm doing secant 45 degrees and I were to flip the square root of 2 over 2, I get this, right? And that's no good because the root's in the bottom, so now I have to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 2. So that gives me square root of 2 times the square root of 2, and then the bottom, the roots would cancel, so that's just a 2 in the bottom. And so looking at this, because there's a 2 in the bottom and the top, right, I can just cancel them out. And so I would just have one left behind when I cancel them out. So one times the square root of two is just the square root of two. And the bottom here would just be a one. One divided by the square root of two is still the square root of two. So this is really my answer here. So I'm gonna put that right here, the square root of two. And let's just think about cosecant for a sec. Cosecant is just flipping, um, uh, the sign here, and notice how the sign is the same value as when we were doing the cosine, right? So when if I were to flip this and then work it out, I'm going to get the same answer. So I'm not even going to do that work because I know it's going to be the same because sine and cosine are the same, so secant and cosecant are going to be the same in the first quadrant if we're talking about angle 45. So that's some ways that it could save you some work here. And then when we have um, the angle 60, sine of 60, let's take a look on our unit circle. 60 is right here. Sine is our y value, so the square root of 3 over 2. And then they've already have cosine. Cosine is just 1 half, looking at the unit circle. And they found tangent. So now we have to find cotangent, but cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So let's think about it. So cotangent, oh, my bad cotangent of 60 
is a reciprocal of this guy. So if I just put this one over one to help me out, if I were to take tangent and flip it, wouldn't cotangent be one over the square root of three? Right. And so now I can just multiply the top and bottom by the square root of three to get rid of the roots. And so now the bottom here is just three and the top is the square root of three because one times the square root of three is the square root of three. And there we have it. Okay, now let's take a look at another one here. Hmm. So this one here, um, so it wants to find cosecant, secant. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so we go to sine. And we gotta flip it. So for cosecant of 60 degrees, if I flip it, it be two over the square root of three, but I have a root in the bottom, so I have to multiply the top and bottom by the square root of three, I guess. The bottom is now gonna be three, and the top here is two square root of three, and I can't simplify the two and the three here, so in this case, that is my answer. Okay, so now I'm gonna erase that part. For this one here, we have the square root of three over two, and so now I have, um, I have to find cosine. So this angle is 120. Well, 120 is actually on the second quadrant, right? So for 120, our cosine, which is our x value, is negative 1 half. So I'm going to grab that negative 1 half. And then they've already found tangent. So cotangent is this, this guy, but flipped. So remember what I did to help us out? I just put this over one because you can put anything. Oh, you can always put a number over one because it's still itself. So cotangent of one, oh, sorry, of 120 is going to be my tangent flipped. So that's negative one over the square root of three. So if I have a square root in the bottom, you guys know it, we're gonna multiply by that square root. So I have negative one times the square root of three. So negative square root of three over three, uh, square root of three times square root of three is just three, roots cancel. And so now this here is my cotangent. Okay, and then last but not least, this box right here is secant, which is associated cosine. So I go to cosine and I gotta flip this guy here. So if I were to flip to get my um, secant at 20, that would just be negative two over one. And negative two over one is just negative two, right? So this is really negative two. All right, so we did quite a few there. I also want you guys to see something here. So 60 and 120 are actually the same types of triangle, right? They both come from an angle on the unit circle to be 60 degrees. So 60 degrees on the first quadrant is 60, but that 120 is um, the terminal angle, but the triangle that created it was the 60 degree triangle. And so notice how their X's and Y's, the coordinates are the same. The only difference is that because it's in the second quadrant, the X here is a negative, whereas this one's a positive because it's the first quadrant. But take a look at their, um, their values, their trig identities here. Notice how they're the same numbers, right? The only difference is that the 120 has negatives in some places. And it actually only has negatives when it's using the x value because the x is negative. So anything that uses an x value like cosine uses an x value, tangent uses an x value, cotangent is gonna have to use an x value because it's a reciprocal of tangent. Secant is related to cosine, so it's going to use a uh, x. But sine and cosecant are both going to be using the y value, so they stay the same. But the other four, they're gonna change because there is a negative sign for the x value. So there's a lot of similarities here you're going to notice. It's all about you know, being aware of those signs and seeing uh, which triangle did they come from. Okay, so we're done with the bell work here. I know that one was a long one, but it's good practice to do some of the homework. Um, let's go build the other quadrants, three and four today.
All right, so I've drawn us a circle. Remember that the unit circle has a radius of one. So let's begin by what we first have learned before this chapter started. So back in chapter 14, I taught you guys that the beginning on the x-axis starts at zero degrees, right? So this side starts at zero degrees. Let me put that further in so that way it's not all scooted out. There we go. So zero degrees, and then this one's 90, 90 degrees on here. And then we have 180, 270, and then back to 360 because that makes an entire revolution. So that's why we call it 360. And so um, now on the first day when we learned about quadrant one on the unit circle, we talked about the 40, I'm sorry, not the 40, we started with the 30 degree angle. So we had the 30 degree. Then we had the 45 degree. And then the 60. Right? And then the next day for quadrant two, so I guess yesterday, we learned about um, the other side, how we can reflect and find the angles on this side. Let me do that a little bit better. Okay. So we know that this angle here is representing the 30 degree angle, but on the second quadrant. Let me label these quadrants. So this is first, second, third, fourth. And so we talked about if this is 30 degrees, right? This is 30 degrees. And if I want to find this terminal angle here, so remember, our initial angle is here, so I want to know how far am I going from the initial angle to the terminal angle that sits here. And so what we had to do is we realized that this is 180, this is a straight angle, right? We can take 30 degrees and subtract from it so that way we could get the other side of it, the terminal angle. So what we did was take 180 and subtract it by 30 degrees to get um, 150 degrees. So this angle right here is 150 degrees. And then we did it with the other uh, angles here. So like this one represents the 45 on the second quadrant, whereas this one represents the 60. So if I wanted to find those angle, I would just take 180 and subtract from it. And so the 45 would have been 135 that we got. And then this one here would have been 120 for the 60 degree. And that's how we found those angles and we just wanted to use a terminal angle. Because we don't want to use 60, 45, 30 because that would land us in the first quadrant. We want to land in the second quadrant so that's why we have to move, we have to make the angle bigger but we had to figure out how much bigger. So that way we can perfectly land in the correct um, uh, part of the quadrant. So. Now what we're going to do today is use that same method, but do it in the third quadrant than the fourth quadrant. So for the third quadrant, let's just place down where, you know, a, a 30, a 45, a 60 triangle would be. So if it was a 30 degree triangle, it'd probably sit like right here, right? I could say that this part here is like 30 degrees. Let me use a different color. So I could say this part here is like 30 degrees. From here, yeah, that's about right. And then this here, next triangle is about like half of this. So that's going to be my 45. And then my 60. But then I have to figure out, okay, well, I'm in the third quadrant. So the third quadrant is between numbers 180 to 270. So I can't use these numbers because that's associated with the first quadrant. So let's brainstorm here. So looking at this, couldn't I, since it's past 180 degrees, couldn't I just add 180 to these angles? Yeah because they've already passed the straight line. It's like I'm adding these new triangles to that angle there. So what I'm gonna do is take um, 
take 180. Oh, sorry, that's a highlighter. 180 and add it. And then I would get, okay, 180 plus 30 is going to be 210 degrees, 210 degrees. And if I would do the next one, I'd take 180 and add with 45. So that gives me um, 225 degrees. And then one more time, 180 plus 60 is um, 240 degrees. And so now I can use these as my terminal angle so I can land in that third quadrant. And so I'm going to kind of do that in this quadrant here, but we have to think strategically. But the same thing, we need to place our 30 degree angle, 30 degree angle, our 45 degree angle, and our 60 degree angle. Okay, but now let's think about how we're going to do this. So it looks like we're just playing around angles that we already know that's on the axis and adding or subtracting to it. So if I were to think about this 30 here, there's 360, right? And I want a positive angle. So if I take this 360 and I were to just subtract 30 degrees, I can figure out how much I went this way, right? How much I went from the initial side to this terminal side. So what I'm going to do is because this piece, I need to figure out what the angle is. I'm going to take 360 this time and subtract it from 30, which gives me 330. And then 360 minus 45 is 315. 360 minus 60 is equal to 300. And so now I can know that if I started at this axis here, then I can pivot, pivot, pivot to whichever angle I need to be at. And so these angles are specific for the fourth quadrant. All right, we have all our angles. Now what we're going to do is put this all on one big unit circle with the coordinates and the angles. So we're going to put it all together now. All right, so um, building this unit circle here. So I've placed down a circle and I've outlined it a few things here, like these three angles. So um, what we're going to do is put in the angles and the coordinates. And so remember, we start off with this angle here being zero degrees. And then this next one is 30 degrees, 45, 60, and then you got your 90 degree angle here. And so let's put in those coordinates. So on the first day that we learned about these coordinates, I said that the um, 30 degree was your square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. This one here, the 45, is the square root of 2 over 2. It's my favorite because they're both the same. X's and Y's are both the same. And then we have 60 is basically 30 but flipped. So you would have 1 half first and then the square root of 3 over 2. And then these two sides here, the ones that are on the x-axis, remember, the entire unit circle has a radius of 1. Um, so in this case, so in this case, um, if the circumference is 1, that means that this here on the x-axis landed on the x value 1, right? And then because it's on the x-axis, the y value here is 0. That's 1, 0. Whereas this one here, because it's on the y-axis, the y-axis, that means that the x value is 0, but the y value is 1. Because it's going to hit the y-axis at 1. Okay. So there is all of the numbers for the first quadrant. So if you know the first quadrant and you want to find the other ones, all you have to do is basically figure out what is the, um, the uh, signs that you are depending on your quadrant. So I'm going to go ahead and outline this. But remember that in the first quadrant, everything is positive. X's and Y's are positive. The second quadrant, x is negative, but y is po still positive. 
So when I'm looking on here and I need to, you know, create my 60 degree, 45 degree, 30 degree angle, um, I got these angles that I'm just going to rewrite. So we've already calculated them. We got the 120, the 35, 135, and then the one, um, oops, sorry, the 150. And then on this side here would just be 180 degrees, all right, if I wanted that. And so basically all I have to do is take these angles, oops, sorry, these angles here and put them to its corresponding one. Like the 60s relate to 120, so I'm going to take this, pop it over, only that the X needs to be a negative sign. So same thing with the 135, it's related to the 45, but the x, the square root of 2, needs to be a negative. And the 150 is related to the 30, so I need to put a negative on the x, and everything else is the same. And even for the 180, the 180 is going to be related to the 0, but because it's on the uh, negative x side, right, that's going to be a negative 1 instead of a uh, positive one, but the because it's still on the x-axis, the y is still zero. And I'm going to do it for the other ones here, just reflecting. But we are now in the third quadrant, right? So if we're in the third quadrant, then I need to consider that my x's are negative, but also my y's are negative. So in this case, you know, I'll put in the angles that we found in that last slide, the 110, 225, and 240. And then this here would be 270. And so um, this 220 is related to the 30 degree, right? This is related to the 30 degree. So I'm going to copy paste that here, but I'm going to make both of them negative because it's in the third quadrant. And I'm going to do that with the next one here. This would be negative square root of 2 over 2 because it's related to the 45 degree angle. And then the 240 is related to the 60 degree angle. And so now I have negative square, oh sorry, it's the 1 half first, negative 1 half square root of 3 over 2. And then our fourth quadrant here, put down our angles, our fourth quadrant, the x here is positive in the fourth quadrant, but the y value here is negative because we're down below, right? So this is going to be negative and a positive. Oh, sorry, I wrote that wrong. It's going to be a positive and a negative because the x here are positive, but the y values are negative. So if I were to put down my angles that we found before, this was 330, this was 315, and then 300. Oh, I think I skipped one. Yeah, I did. So at the 270 here, so for the 270, let me grab my pen. Um, the coordinate, right, is related to the 90 degree, but it's in the bottom quadrant, right? So in this quadrant here, the uh, y values are negative. Oops, I forgot a negative sign there. My bad. Let me fix it. Um, so this side here, if I were to write down my coordinate, my x value is still 0 because it's on like the, the y axis. So x value is 0 there. But because it's down here, that has to be a negative 1 for the y's. Okay, now let's go find the other ones here. So 330 is related to the 30 degree. Um, so in this case, remember, the y values are negative, so I'm just going to change those to a negative. 315 is related to the 45, so I'm just going to make sure that I have a negative square root of 2 on the y. And then we have the 300 is related to 60, so 1 half negative square root of 3 over 2. And that is your entire unit circle. Once you get back to here, this is also just your 360 degrees. And so this here is all of the coordinates on a unit circle and all of the angles too. So for tomorrow's memory quiz, the first memory quiz you'll take, you are just asked to memorize the first quadrant. Next week, you will have to memorize um, 
all of the coordinates and the uh, angles for the unit circle. All right, that's it for this journal.